I have never seen people react to a celebrity the way that people react to Jennifer. And together, they're on fire. Yeah. Tonight, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez, as you've never seen them. An exclusive first ever interview, together. Before the release of their first film together, Geely. I don't even know why I had a crush on you back a long time when I first met you. We did have a chemistry. When we worked together, they were definitely sparks. Ben on Jen. She's much more traditional than I anticipated she would be. Ben wears the pants. Jen on Ben. <laughs> he definitely wears the pants. Um, She's a little bit of grit. And a whole lot of glam. J-Lo, the girl from the block, an entrepreneur with an empire. The important thing is who I am, really. How I treat people. He's a new age hero, playing men of steel. After striking Oscar gold. For people that nobody ever thought would ever get together. Now they talk about it all. From tabloid troubles. You hear all the stuff that people say about you, and yeah, it can be hurtful. To wedded bliss. When's the wedding? Well, <laughs> <laughs> bring in the priests. <laughs> Will this be Hollywood's big fat sneak wedding? What about your wedding dress? Is there a lot of cleavage? Mm. I don't really have a lot of cleavage, babe. About the green dress. <laughs> Two stars, very hot, and tonight, very honest. Maybe too honest. Are you really with J-Lo? Tell the truth. Do you have sex for her? No! You know the real Ben. <laughs> in love, on screen and off, Ben and Jen, a Dateline special, after this brief message. And now, Ben and Jen, tonight's Dateline special. Here is Stone Phillips. Good evening. Audiences have always been captivated by the great Hollywood romances. The classic couples whose chemistry on the widescreen and in real life is electric and enduring. Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn. And who could forget Bogey and Bacall, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, or Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor? Well, this summer, another charismatic couple is in the spotlight. Jen and Ben, Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck, two big stars who met on the set and made headlines worldwide after a whirlwind romance. Do they have the stuff and the staying power to become another classic couple? Tonight, Lopez and Affleck sit down for their first ever primetime interview together, an exclusive from our friend at Access Hollywood, Pat O'Brien. Now people screaming, what's the deal with you and so-and-so? Forget what your astronomy teacher told you. This is what happens when stars collide. In this case, when Ben met Jen. My love don't cost a thing. Hello. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez were, of course, famous in their own right before the film Gigli brought them together on screen and off. I don't know what that means, but it sounds beautiful. It means you're not my type. He, the leading man with brawn and brain, only 25 when he won an Oscar for writing the script Good Will Hunting, along with childhood buddy Matt Damon. She, the triple threat known as J-Lo, a singer, dancer, and actress with a personal life as technicolor as her movie. But their romance has propelled them to a whole new level of fame. Every move they make from the red carpet to a Red Sox game is photographed and talked about again and again. And all that buzz has made Ben and Jen a very formidable duo. So, you are dating, huh? <laughs> yeah, we've, we've been found out, it seems. This is your first interview together. What does it feel like? You're finally doing this. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good, evidently. <laughs> Feels like being stoned, apparently. <laughs> no. Hand clap it. The future Mr. and Mrs. Affleck invited us into a rental house he's staying in, in Vancouver. It's more modest than one might expect. Both are shooting films in Canada, and this is where they've spent most of their summer weekends. A waterfront haven away from the relentless attention they've received since becoming a couple. Do you realize how fascinated America 
kissed by you. It's so weird to even hear you say that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like such a strange thing. No, we don't sit around here and, and think about that. I, I don't know. I don't. What's the fascination? It seems strange to me. I think that you can really make yourself crazy if you start thinking about who's paying attention to me, who's, who's interested in me. Okay, so another couple may have briefly stolen their thunder. How happy were you when Ashton Kutcher and Demi started dating? Elated. <laughs> so pleased. I'm, I'm looking for more. I'm trying to drum that up. I'm constantly calling the tablets. Like, have you guys heard about um, Kirk Douglas and Mandy Moore? Are dating? Uh, I sort of anticipated that. Like, I figured, okay, there'd be, like, a certain amount of attention this would get, and then mm. something else would come along that would be newer tabloid fodder. Wishful thinking, Ben. Expect a whole new round of buzz when the two walk the red carpet as co-stars for the first time when Geely has its world premiere next week. Read to me, Larry. What? Oh, come on, Larry. Read to him. I got nothing here. You don't have a book. For well over a century, the adventurous flavor of Tabasco sauce has fired up generations of thrill seekers. Okay? That's good. It's becoming what some have labeled the Benefer Show. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez have seen their already impressive status and earning power rise even more. Get, get, get that. This year, both cracked the top 10 of Forbes' Celebrity Hottest 100, Ben at number 7, Jennifer ahead at number 5. Although, according to the magazine, he out-earned his fiancée last year, $36 million, to her 29. And that can buy a lot of bling-bling. But Ben says, don't believe those stories you've read about his lavish spending habits. Though there's no denying, he went all out on that 6.1 carat pink diamond engagement ring. What's the most extravagant thing you bought her? I would say the engagement ring is probably a thing that men spend the most money on in there, right? Well, there's all these car rumors that you yeah, buy cars. I, have, I somehow have like 8,000 cars. I wish. Where are all these cars? I want the cars. I'm sure I'm number one carjack target. The carjackers are so disappointed. They're staking out my house. Like, where are all the cars? But these two super rich superstars say it's their middle class background that brought them together. At heart, he's just a kid from Beantown, and she's, well, you know. You and Ben are from kind of the same backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that, does that work for you? We really, really connect on that level, you know. Uh, I could say this is how we spent Christmas or this is how we did New Year's or this is, and he's like yeah that's exactly what we did too Jennifer! their drive is another thing they have in common both have put in years of hard work to get to where they are now Affleck grew up in a working-class neighborhood outside of Boston his father a part-time actor who worked odd jobs to make ends meet his mother a school teacher they split up when he was 11 years old hi I'm Ben Affleck by then, he was already in show business, landing a role at age eight in the PBS series, The Voyage of the Mimi. Sir, could you please show me where the Mimi is docked? The child actor eventually graduated to adult parts. Oh, that's it. I saw that, you little second. You two are dead. In independent films like Dazed and Confused and Chasing Amy. I love you, and not, not in a friendly way. And then, in 1998, the big break that's become legend in Hollywood. That Oscar for goodwill hunting and the clout that came with it. Within a few years, Ben Affleck was one of Hollywood's highest paid actors. The former indie guy was now the heroic leading man in films like Armageddon, Pearl Harbor, and Daredevil. And the 30-year-old actor says it's those blockbuster movies that allow him to do other films, like Gigli, for which he is earning a cool $12.5 million. All right, how can I help? Uh, the plot needs a twist. The individual needs to be touched in some manner as to uh, convince him of the error of his ways before he can hurt other people. You're following all this. Yeah, all of it. All of it. The pattern in terms of doing one kind of movie to afford myself the opportunity to do another, more interesting, less obvious kind of a movie. And they're the kind of movies that people typically don't want to take chances on unless they feel like they have somebody who was just in a, a hit movie, you know what I mean? Jennifer Lopez entered show business a little later in life than her fiance. She grew up middle class, one of three sisters, her dad a computer programmer, and her mom, just like her fiance's, a school teacher. 
Jennifer trained as a dancer and was a Bronx girl barely out of her teens when she got her first big break in 1990, selected to be one of the Fly Girls on the television show In Living Color. She broke into the movies at age 25 with a luminous debut in Mi Familia, but it was a lead role in the 1997 film Selena that really got her noticed. She's been working steadily in films ever since. Proving she can play everything from an abused wife in Enough to a real-life Cinderella in Made in Manhattan. There's millions of women who are just dying for you to look their way. <laughs> then why are you making me look so hard? Movies, it seems, were just part of the plan. Lopez, who says she always wanted a career like Barbara Streisand, is also a top-selling recording artist. I've got a cry. All right, then. I just love Barbara Streisand. I don't know if I would like my career just to be just like anybody's. I want to, you know, make my own way, make my own path, you I know, blaze my that. own trail. Ooh. And this girl from the Bronx accomplished something that girl from Brooklyn never did. Lopez is the only woman to have a number one movie, The Wedding Planner, and a number one record, J-Lo, all in the same week. Yeah, that's the hotness right there. And it was that drive and talent that got Ben Affleck's attention long before they even met. One of the things I was most struck by was how she was able to do this sort of rock star thing and be an actress as well. A lot of people have tried to do it, and it's a really hard thing to do both at a high level. It would take one of those Hollywood twists of fate to bring them together on the set of Gigli. Jennifer Lopez was in only after another famous actress bowed out. Have you thanked Halle Berry for dropping out of this movie? <laughs> <laughs> I should. I should write her a little note now that I think about it. Because that's that was a twist of fate, right? Yeah. She, yeah. 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 That was, uh, you know, funny thing how things happen, you know. When we come back Jennifer from Lopez. the silver screen to a golden opportunity, the six carat back. moment. How did you pop the question? The details about that word that are. Private, Not private anymore because and, I told everybody. <laughs> and later, wedding bells are ringing, but where and when? It's not going to be a thing where we're trying to hide or anything right. like that. If people want to be outside and they want to take our picture, then okay. When Ben and Jen continues. It's not... not yet. You're watching a bit of movie history. Affleck and Lopez on screen together for the first time. The film is called Gigli. Ben plays the title character, Larry Gigli. It's nice to meet you, Larry Gigli. He's a mobster wannabe with a soft side. Why are you driving me crazy? I don't even know why I had a crush on you back a long time ago when I first met you. Jennifer is Ricky, a tough, take-no-prisoners female enforcer. And then the gouging out of your opponent's eyeball. One's opponent is left with no memory of anything he has ever seen. Who also happens you know, to be a lesbian. You're actually a very attractive woman. You know, this may be a good time to suggest that you not allow the seeds of cruel hope to sprout in your soul. I don't know what that means, but it sounds beautiful. It means you're not my type. Believe it or not, it's a love story. Let me tell you something. In every relationship, there's a bull and a cow. I'm the bull. You're the cow. You got that? Yeah, I got it. Bull cow. Before Gigli, these two superstars were virtual strangers to each other. When did you meet? We Here. met, like, at a couple of the parties, you know. We barely Here paid any attention to each other yeah, at all. Just like, hi, hi. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she, that's hi, that's nice thing. You iced me? Yeah. <laughs> no, you iced me. <laughs> But both stars came to the set with their own expectations about the movie and about each other. When you found out that you were going to work with her on this movie, what were your first thoughts? For real. I, <laughs> I thought, uh... I, I was excited. I actually really wanted Jen to do the movie. I thought that it was important. Like, selfishly for me, I wanted to have somebody who was well-known, you know, big star. And then, you know, I guess I was a little bit kind of thinking, well, is she going to be, uh, you know, what's this going to be like? I mean, you always sort of go into a movie, if you don't know the person you're working with, treading on thin ice sort of for the first week, hoping that the person doesn't turn out to be a disaster, you know? I'm sure it's the same for you, that you go in and you kind of want to see what's, what people are going to be like. No? Not the same for you? <laughs> no. No, I, I, I go into a movie with an open you mind. You worry. 
You worry like I wasn't that. worried. I wasn't worried at all. I, hear you. I, wor I worry more that the people are going to like me. You know what I mean? I'm like, I hope, he, I hope they like me. <laughs> I do. So did you call your girlfriend and say I'm working with Ben Affleck? He's the sexiest man alive. He wasn't the sexiest man alive then, no. He wasn't even remotely appealing, really, <laughs> to tell you the truth. No, he was so it. far from the sexiest man alive, I thought he was kind of homely. I, I didn't mention it. Oh uh, no, I um, I was a, you know, I was excited to work on. We actually, I had, oh, I had done. You called your girlfriend up and you were like, he's hot and working with Ben Affleck. He's so right. fine. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Um, <laughs> no. You and Larry, sweetheart. Come on. I hope so. She's gorgeous. She thinks I'm beautiful. Yeah, yeah. she's blind to one eye. <laughs> it felt like we had good chemistry. You know what I mean? He liked to improv. I could improv back. You know what I mean? He's the best person to improv in the whole entire business, really. Uh, he's he's so don't funny. be like my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your mom where you're no. like, don't do that thing where you're like he's the best. He he's is so though. I swear I'm not like... the only one who says it. I'm yeah. not the only one who says it. One Gili scene that's sure to get talked about: Jennifer striking yoga poses with some not ready for prime time dialogue. The studio is keeping it tightly under wraps. The yoga scene, <laughs> which is just sensational. You're smiling, <laughs> and we yeah. can't even say that word here. You uh, can't say yoga? No, the other <laughs> word. <laughs> but, um... I know what you're talking about. You have to go see the movie to know what we're talking about. Hello. When people see this movie, they're going to see that first time that you see each other in the movie. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to bother you. It's just, um, I was wondering if it wouldn't be too much trouble if I could use your phone for a second. And it looks like you've fallen in love right there when that door opens, you know? Academy Awards Brilliant. for that right there. That's all I can tell you. Golden Globes, at least. <laughs> <laughs> for Christ's sake. All right, Zach. Yeah, cable, cable ain't People's award. Choice. <laughs> Blockbuster. Blockbuster. Oh, yeah. Remember, when Ben and Jen were filming Gigli, she was a newlywed, married to her backup dancer, Chris Judd. And she was, in Ben's words, off limits. I think, I think people are inevitably will, will wonder. Um, the truth is, is that when we did start working together, and we, we got along great. I mean, we really did become friends, really, really good friends. How good? And really good friends. You know what I mean? We talked a lot, and that's the thing. There was no kind of um, idea that we would be together in the future, so it was one of the things where you kind of like actually say too much. What did you tell him that you don't want him to know? You know, we talked a lot about, what do you talk about? You know what I mean? You talk about past relationships and how you are, and you know, I was like this, and he was like, I was like this, and I was like, you know what I mean? So you just, you know, we gave up way too much. <laughs> and real quick, you know? Uh, so, but it was fun. And with hours and hours filming together, the co-stars say the intimate oh, details really? flowed. Really? You know, because you know when you're not trying to impress somebody because yeah. you don't think that you're ever going to be dating oh, them, so you're like, whatever, yeah. it doesn't matter, I don't have to impress right. her. You know what I mean? And you kind of like, yeah, yeah, I did do that. You know what I mean? Or <laughs> you'll kind of admit to things that you wouldn't necessarily, and the truth is probably, you know, we all try to put this, you, you know. You me about all his ex-girlfriends and everything, that's what I mean, you know, and I. <laughs> Let's boil that down. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I so anyways. <laughs> we, we, you know you, when you you put out like a kind of a representative it's like chris rock says when you're trying to meet so it's like right. you, the two representatives he wasn't meet, trying it's not to rap really to you, me That's you know thing. and and instead i just you know and i think she was the same way right. so we kind of worked kind of a cool way to do it so it was great right. you get to know each other you kind of the, the real best. person right. the real person as That's opposed true. to like the man i haven't forgotten that shit either oh. <laughs> <laughs> luckily i had nothing bad to tell him on the other hand I got a confession. I think we're good together. And when did you realize something was happening here? When did you fall in love? You keep asking that. I I'm told what, you. American you can't pinpoint it. <laughs> it was like we became friends first. Yeah, that is the evolved, honest to right. God through. Yeah, yeah, that's the truth. The two remained friends after the movie wrapped. Ben even joined Mr. and Mrs. Judd at the opening of her Pasadena restaurant, Madre's, in April 2002. Just three months later, Jennifer and Judd split her second divorce. Within another three months, she and Ben were engaged. How did you pop the question to her? Traditional way? In a traditional way? Yeah. Yes, it was traditional. Uh, there's some of it that I like. That's that's the details of it that were that are private Not and kind of special. Not private anymore because and, I told everybody. No, you told some of it. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're a saboteur. I know I'm terrible. I'm a girl. What do you want from me? 
I'd like to talk about it. I want to know how he proposed right now. I, you know, the, we took, I, I took the ring out and, uh, and, and I asked her to uh, marry. I, I took the uh, traditional uh, approach. Yes. Yes. It was a proposal heard round the world, and neither Ben nor Jen was ready for the fallout, even though both had been down the road of high-profile romances before. <laughs> Three years ago, she had Versace draped on her body and Sean Puffy Combs on her arm. The romance was a match made in tabloid heaven, complete with that now infamous nightclub shooting, his arrest, acquittal, and their breakup on, of all days, Valentine's. But even all that didn't prepare her for the Benefer show hype. Well, you'd think you'd had enough rehearsal for that with, with Puffy. Yeah. I mean, you were, you were... Well, me and Puffy were, were in the, you know, in the paper a lot as well, and there was a kind of a, a, a fascination with that relationship, too. But this was a different level. I felt like I had already been in the press enough that I, I could handle it, you know what right. I mean? But even I felt a little uncomfortable with kind of the, the uh, so many eyes on you and then looking for your steps and wondering if you're going to break up or you're going to stay. You've only been together a few weeks and you're like, whoa. And Ben also had his own dress rehearsal five years ago when he dated an Oscar winner, Gwyneth Paltrow. I went through a lot, yeah, similar type of thing with, with, with Gwyneth, um, not to, to this degree, but it was something that I was, it was the first time, like, news about a relationship I was in was on, like, CNN, you know, and I thought, this is, the world has gone mad now, you know. But Ben says his relationship with Jennifer has earned him some major props, not only with his school teacher mom's sixth graders, but with some old buddies from his hometown. What did they say when he started dating Jennifer? Uh, Who was the first to call? Is this true? I got, yeah, I got, yo, bro, listen, uh, I don't mean to get in your business or nothing, but are you really with J-Lo? Tell the truth. Did you have sex with her? Did you? Tell me the truth. Don't lie to me. <laughs> A lot of calls with guys I haven't heard from in like, you know, 10 years from Boston. <laughs> Never impressed with anything I've ever done in my life until they were like, no, sir. Affleck? <laughs> it can't be true. Did you have sex with her? her yeah, that's the question. Like, did you have sex with her? You did? No, sir. <laughs> for real? I can't believe it. Ma! I'm going for Mama Ben Affleck, that skinny kid from down the block. So I, I made good in Boston. Okay, now? That's the, uh, that was my crowning achievement. Up next, the bad rap about her rap. A diva with an entourage? People are always surprised when I show up with just me and my my cousin who's my assistant <laughs> and, the, and the driver and they're like well where's everybody else <laughs> like, well. and later details on the big day i think one of the things that we're not going to do all right and maybe i should have discussed this with you <laughs> <laughs> when ben and jen continues nbc sunday one chef I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the Jennifer Lopez has come a long way from that block in the Bronx, surpassing even her own dreams of stardom. How many times do you see a Latina walking down the red carpet? She's actually starring in the movie in the title role. That was six years ago, when she broke ground with the film Selena. Her million-dollar salary was a record for a Latina actress. Now, a week shy of her 33rd birthday, Jennifer Lopez is one of Hollywood's highest-paid actresses period, earning $12 million for her role in Gigli. Every relationship has a ball and a cow, huh? That's right. And all this has made her something of an icon in the Latino community. So it was some homecoming when Jenny came back to the block to do a Today Show concert for the kids in her old Bronx neighborhood. I think it's important for the Latin community and, and, and just for people in general to have all different kinds of people to look up to and to be able to see yourself as a little girl and look up at a screen and say, oh, that person's just like me. That means I can do that too, or I can do anything I want to. She's the American dream in spandex and stilettos. Or as her proud fiancé puts it, a symbol that you can make something of yourself no matter where you come from. This is somebody who nobody ever said, like, hey, kid, you're going to be a star. You got what it takes. She didn't look like 
uh, how people were supposed to look. She didn't have the body shape that women were supposed to have. And rather than changing herself or trying to be something, she said, this is who I am. And she believed in herself. She was a dancer. I think it's a pretty impressive Horatio Alger story. Jennifer Lopez, singer, dancer. These are things you boys are going to want to work on in the future. Actress. Okay. Oh, and one more thing. Sport are all well and good, but very hard to earn a living at. So I want you guys to study hard and keep your grades up, all right? Okay, everyone, yes? And she is also an entrepreneur. You've heard her videos, you've seen her movies, you've heard her music. I'm certain you're going to love this fashion collection. Don't care if everybody's gone. Turn it up because it turns me on. She has her own clothing line, accessories, and even her own perfume. Being the face of J-Lo Inc. has landed Ms. Lopez a prestigious spot on Crane's list of the 100 most powerful minority business leaders in New York. But with power and success comes something else, a reputation. Jennifer Lopez has been branded, she says unfairly, with that dreaded big D, a diva. Reportedly demands white flowers and candles in her dressing room, a certain thread count on her sheets, and a specific water temperature for her Evian. Hey, even Ben admits he was concerned. I probably secretly thought, like, no, this is going to be a pain in the ass. Like, we're going with this woman, you know, I got to try to get through this thing and just, you know... And then it wasn't that way. And then at a certain point, I thought, like, that's a shame. You know what I mean? This woman kind of has a bad rap. All I do is, is really, you know, go to work and, and try to be professional and be on time and be prepared. And, and then you hear all this stuff that people say about you. And, yeah, it can be hurtful. It gets laughable. The white candles, the thread counts on the sheets, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's Which, funny, the ones that don't die. The like, entourage. Always, I think people are always surprised, like, when I go work on a movie or do something. Oh, here when they I come. show up, When I show up with just me and my my cousin, my assistant, <laughs> and, the, and the driver, and they're like, well, where is everybody else? <laughs> like, this is it. It's just me. I'm the only one working here. Jennifer's defenders say it's this man, Benny Medina, who helped create that J-Lo diva image. Medina was more than a manager. In her last album note, she called him her man on the front lines, her right-hand man. Last month, they had an ugly professional breakup. She not only fired Medina, but is suing him for millions in back commissions, claiming Medina unlawfully acted as her agent on certain deals. Why did you erase all that part of your life? You know, that part of my life is, is, is being settled right now, and I feel like, you know, it's, it's been a, a hard situation, but I think in the end, it will resolve itself in a good way because Benny and I do care about each other. Benny Medina issued a statement to the press in response to the lawsuit filed by his former star client calling the charges lies and added, Jennifer Lopez, by making false allegations against me, is now trying to add me to the long list of people whom she has used and discarded after she took from them all she could get. I look forward to the opportunity to have the world come to know the real Jennifer Lopez. He said some harsh things about you, though. You know, it's not nice. <laughs> you really love the subject, don't you? <laughs> no, I don't love, I don't love the subject because I don't feel like you have to explain or talk about personal things or business even so much. You know what I mean? I think it's a lot more simple than everybody makes it out to be. As for the talk that the other Ben, Mr. Affleck, is behind the Medina firing, he insists he and Jennifer keep their professional lives separate. It's not as though I say, you, got, you should do this, that, and the other thing, or she says, you should do this, that, and the other thing. Because I think it's dangerous in any relationship if, you're, if you let too much of the, uh, your professional life intrude. These two high-powered superstars try to leave the business at the office. Jennifer says they're homebodies at heart. <laughs> I love this quote. You said that uh -oh. curled under Ben's arm is where you want to be. Those are my favorite places. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> You're embarrassing me. Is that Why did I say that? <laughs> that was girl talk. I like that, though. I do. I, that's my favorite place. You know, but at the end of the day, I really enjoy the safety, security, and serenity of family and home. Mm. That's what I love. And I'm glad that I found somebody who appreciates it just as much 
and we are able to enjoy it together. Brilliant. We have to do, do our think? thing together now. Uh, yeah. I, I'm ready. He's the sexiest man alive. When they pick a new sexiest man alive, it's going to be a lie. You're the sexiest man alive. <laughs> when we come back, the recipe for chemistry at work on the set. I don't know what that means, but it sounds beautiful. It means you're not my type. And at home in the kitchen. Don't you feel like this is a little bit like the Discovery Channel shows? Where they're like, watch, Those are my favorite shows. watch the J-Lo in her natural okay. habitat. <laughs> When Ben and Jen continues. Later on Ben and Jen. Oh, sexy, unattainable girl sleeping in a bed right next to me. They are on-screen lovers in Chile. And back from action. Larger than life co-stars claim even this is work. Even when we're doing love scene or whatever, it was really about kind of trying to make the scene work, trying to make it good. I hope that once you get in there and you sit down and you start watching the movie, that actually we're playing two people very different from ourselves. Yeah. Kind of, you know, we spent a lot of time being a character on the set. Uh, <laughs> ben and Jan insist working together and living together are two very different oh productions. When they walk through the front door, Hello. they leave all the action behind. This is how Ben and Jen say they really live. You film this long enough, you're going to realize it really is boring. It's Sunday afternoon at the Affleck Lopez house. They eat, they what cook, up? they go to the bathroom. And like a lot of couples, they like hanging out in sweats, just enjoying each other's company. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can catch Ben on the court. He's not only a diehard sports fan, don't get him started on his beloved Celtics and Red Sox. Like McHale, how do you stop that? I don't know how you stop that. But he's pretty good at playing hoops as well. Yes, the sexiest man alive got game. Air Affleck. Who does wear the pants in this house? Ben wears the pants. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely Let me wears give the pants. Him, um, no. I don't think... We respect each other. Yeah, I think you have a important. mutual friend. I don't think there's any, you know, I, I don't think it's any, uh, anybody has any, like... Any but I'm traditional in a way yeah. that I take on the woman roles in, in certain things. She's so very, uh, much more traditional than, than I anticipated she would be. I like to cook, and I like to make sure he has things. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a caretaker. You like making toast in the morning? And... Whatever you'd like. This is for chicken cutlets. And I got a treat, a cooking lesson from Jennifer herself. This is the secret ingredient for our beans. You want to know why our beans taste so good when you go to a Puerto Rican restaurant? This is why. But I won't tell you what it is. Ooh, goody. A Lopez family recipe for Puerto Rican fried chicken cutlets, red beans, and rice. I don't even think Ben likes me to cook as much as I <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he appreciates that. No, he does love it, actually. That's a lie. He does love it. He loves it. He really loves it. Should I stir this? Yes, stir it. That's very good, Pat. Thank you. Well, let me put the salt in before I make you taste it. Not too much. Just a little bit. See, you have this nice and bubbly right now. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's good. Yeah. A week after you're married, what will your name be? What do you think my name will gonna, be? Are you, gonna... are you am, am I going to change it professionally, yeah. you mean? Mm -hmm. No, I think I'm going to stay with Jennifer Lopez, but my name will be Jennifer Affleck, obviously. So what will your stationery say? Jennifer right. Affleck. Jaff. 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 Doesn't have the, quite the same <laughs> ring to it. <laughs> but you got to make sacrifices. Actually, Jennifer Affleck's a good name. It's not bad. It's not bad. I take it. Put a lot of oil. This is probably not good for people to see <laughs> <laughs> how unhealthy I cook. <laughs> Where's Ben? Where he always is when I'm cooking, watching the Red Sox. <laughs> ben! Yeah. Oh, this is the domestic goddess part of the program. <laughs> we put this little dinner together for you. Mm-hmm. We? You. Yes, we have. Pat, I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we have. What is this here? Fried, fried fish or chicken? Chicken. Chicken. Right? <laughs> That's good. Well, I couldn't see. It looked like a little... It's always stuff. fried. Is it fried fish, chicken, pork? Fried right, something. <laughs> you do dishes, Ben? Uh, when I'm called upon. When duty calls. Yeah, I don't... It's not my favorite thing in the world to do. So now I'm happy if I don't have to do them. <laughs> yeah. 
I do do them. I've never seen you. <laughs> I don't. I don't like to watch this. It's my favorite thing. No. So there it is. So how are we doing on this? Yep, this looks good. Yep, it's under control. Good. Thank you, baby. It's really looking good. It's gonna be fine. This is gonna come out just just right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead and press it. Just like Mama made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, little. Thank you. Still to come, getting down to details on the wedding everyone is waiting for. Do you think Matt will break down when he makes the toast? He's a very weepy, weepy man. When Ben and Jen continues after this brief message, When's the wedding? Come on, Pat. Well, <laughs> bring in the priest. <laughs> right. This summer, next summer? When should we do it? Yeah. You said it. No. <laughs> do you have a date? <clears throat> yeah, kind of. We're working with something. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know when the time's appropriate. Okay. What could be a call? One wedding matter. I told you you can't come, Pat. I'm not going to go through with you. It's <laughs> a very small list. It's very narrow. You're just on the cusp. Can You're I a bubble. Have the possibility I could make that list? You could crash. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be a thing where we're trying to hide or anything uh -huh. like that. We're just, uh, we're not sure, and we don't feel the need to let people in on every step of the way right. because it's boring. <laughs> You're famous for your dresses, obviously. One of the most famous dresses ever at the Grammys. What about your wedding dress? Do you remember that dress you wore at the Grammys? I'm not. This is the titty dress? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? I, I knew that they could say that because they can't, they can't put that in the show. Don't bleep it and put it in, baby. Just have don't, you don't saying that on TV. The green dress. The other dress. The right. dress. Very nice. Very gorgeous. Thank you. So, do you have to outdo that one, or...? I guess oh, it'd be a little no. more traditional. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's not that. No, but I, I'm, having, I'm having something green, made. I'm having, yeah. It's not green. It's not green? Is, it, is there a lot of cleavage? Mm, I don't really have a lot of cleavage, babe. Got the green dress. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys getting married with the helicopters and the paparazzi and the pictures. I think, I think it's the thing that bums made. me out because it seems like to be so loud. I've never been to a celebrity. I think they wedding. do the helicopters when you're trying to hide and nobody can get close or everything. And I think one of the things that we're not going to do, or I, and maybe I should have discussed this with you, <laughs> is that. <laughs> is that Tell me, what are we? No, I think, I I think a smart thing would to, to do would be like to not make it the Invite biggest secret. No, it's oh. not to make it the biggest secret in the world. You know oh. what I mean? If, if people want to be outside and they want to take our picture, then okay. You know, we're not going to, you know, be with 24 well, million security guards at our wedding. How we right? we want to just be like, have a nice wedding. We want to have, have it done, be a beautiful yeah. day about what it's about. And if there happen to be cameras outside, then that's fine. You know, we're not going to obsess over that. You are, huh? Well, I guess we worked that out then, haven't we? Because we've established that. No, I think the truth is to not change your life one way or another yeah. according gotta... to the dictates of other people and, and how, how it might be perceived, what people might say, whether people, good or bad, what, um, whether they're going to be photographers or not. If I want to go, like, go to the movies or get a slice of pizza or whatever, we do that. And if, and if somebody takes a picture and we look just ridiculous slightly, then, you know, <laughs> we do. <laughs> That's, that's why Jennifer keeps me around. She always will look good compared to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> She's always sort of glamorous and thing, and I'm always... <laughs> There's things that we want, obviously, that we would keep private. We want to keep the day about our family and about us and about what we're doing and the commitment we're making. That's what it's about that day. This is a wonderful little window into domestic tranquility. Isn't it nice? Uh, good luck keeping that wedding private. Look what happened when we were filming right there in their own backyard. Where? Right there. Oh my God, there's paparazzi right there. That's a real fucking window into a day in the life. <laughs> this is crazy. How did you, you're on private?
your property. Oh, sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> oh, don't be crazy. What are you going to happen? <laughs> You think Matt will break down when he makes the toast at the rehearsal? He's dinner? a very weepy, weepy man. Well, actually, the best, the best man does the toast. The best man does do the toast. That's true. Which is probably my brother. Right. That's supposed to Matt. Although, uh, although Matt can make a toast if he likes. Though. He's welcome. To toast. <laughs> he's made many. <laughs> And the most important question, will this be a Red Sox family or a New York Yankees family? Ooh. I can't be involved in any family that's not a Red Sox family. You, you know can't be saying? involved? I draw a line. Maybe I you know? should go now. Oh, come on now. <laughs> you don't even, you're not even really a Yankees family. What do you mean? <laughs> Your father's My a Mets father's fan. My father's a Mets fan. The Mets is fine. I can put up with the Mets. The family split, but we're all New York teams. Okay. You're, I don't mind the Mets. I can live with. I can't, pinstripes can't be in the house. Right. I can't abide it. I can't. But you Our child will pick what he wants to be, a Yankee or a Red Sox. I don't know if he wants to have a father. <laughs> 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 Well, there's your scoop. They plan on having kids, and that's one co-production we can't wait to see. Until then, Ben and Jen's short-term plans, they'll be co-stars once again in Jersey Girl. Am I missing something? And in just two weeks, the opening of Gigli where it all began. Step up and good things start to happen. Am I right? Whether on screen or off screen, Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck will be watching. So, will their chemistry on the set morph into magic at the movies or end up mixed into the sale bin at Blockbuster? No doubt their fans will be rooting for Jen and Ben and Geely when it opens later this month. Because as everyone in Hollywood knows, we all love a happy ending.